जाते हैं मर्मर के We'll start within a few moments, sir. You are live. Please start, sir. A very good evening to all of you. Welcome to the international webinar on enhancing corporate health during Corona crisis, organized by Scope in association with IPCA and broadcast partner Tata Sky. This is the eleventh webinar in the series of Scope virtual conferences and symposiums. We have received an extremely overwhelming response for today's webinar with participants joining us live and many watching through Scope, YouTube, and other social media platforms of Scope and IPCA. Our whole life is centered around remaining free from sickness. Well, all this is only possible if we have a healthy body and soul. As it is said that he who has health has hope and he who has hope has everything. In order to assure you the hope Scope and IPCA bring to you an esteemed panel of medical experts who would be guiding you through a journey of a fit heart, fit body, and role of food and supplements in achieving the same. We are honored to have on the panel today, Dr. Naveen C. Nanda, who is a pioneering cardiologist and distinguished professor of medicine and cardiovascular diseases at University of Alabama, USA. We, are also, we, have, we also have the pleasure of having with us Chief Functional Nutritionist and Therapeutic Lifestyle Healthcare Practitioner, Ms. Mona Johar, joining us from New York. We also have with us a very persona versatile personality, Dr. H.K. Chopra, who is also a very well-known name in cardiology. We also have with us Mr. Atul Sopti, Director General Scope, who is an inspiration and motivation behind this webinar. We are also joined by Dr. Anil Parikh and Mr. Johnny Edwin from IPCA. Before we commence with the technical sessions of the webinar, may I have the pleasure of inviting Mr. Atul Sokti, Director General Scope, to welcome the eminent panel and the participants. To tell you briefly about Sri Sokti, he is a visionary leader having nearly four decades of versatile professional experience. He, ha he was CMD BHEL before he joined Scope and has ever since been innovating and inspiring Scope to New York Heights. Sir, may we have your address, please? Over to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Samriddhi. Dr. Nanda, Ms. Mona Johar, Dr. H.K. Chopra, Dr. Anil Parikh, Mr. Johnny Edwin, Ms. Asha Kapoor, medical professionals and participants joining from all over the world. Good evening to all of you who are joining from India and good morning to all of those participants who are joining from USC. Welcome to the international webinar on enhancing corporate health habits coronavirus organized by SCOPE in association with IPCA. Tata Sky being the broadcast partner. Ladies and gentlemen, 
I would like to start by thanking and expressing my heartfelt gratitude to all the health professionals and frontline COVID warriors who are working tirelessly, selflessly to support and care for the people infected with the pandemic. I, on behalf of school and public sector fraternity, thank you, the Corona warriors, the frontline workers, for ensuring health care for everyone everywhere. Coronavirus, as you know, has been termed as global pandemic, crossing borders and countries, infecting people and all over the world. In this situation, health is not only likely to be impacted due to corona, but other diseases also, which may disarm the human immunity, threat, <coughs> lifestyle, mental stress, or even wrong food habits. The significance of overall well-being becomes even more paramount for organizations engaged in essential services such as public sector enterprises, globally known as state-owned enterprises. Along with fulfilling their commercial and social obligations, Indian SOEs, they have been at the forefront in fighting the pandemic. They are supplementing the government efforts in all fronts, whether it's medical, social, contributing significant amount to prime minister's uh, uh, cares funds, scope, the standing conference of public enterprises and apex body of PSCs in India is also making all efforts to upkeep the health and safety of the employees while ensuring that its objective and mission with respect to capacity building and policy advocacy are also addressed. As it is said, that health is like money. We don't value it till we lose it. Hence at school, we believe that it is a time that all of us give importance to healthy body and soul so that we are able to cherish the greatest gift of the God that is life. With this in mind, today's webinar has been organized with an aim to bring healthy tips to your doorsteps to make you prepare and prevent, rather repair and repent. While subject of webinar, they are important, but basically the strength of any webinar comes from the content and the faculty. What more we could have asked for? We have the globally acclaimed panel of speakers who will be educating us on healthy food, the gateway to healthy heart, thereby ensuring great immunity and distance from any disease. Ladies and gentlemen, we have today with us Dr. Naveen Sinanda, who is a distinguished professor of medicine and cardiovascular diseases at University of Alabama, USA. He has joined us live from USA. Welcome, Dr. Nanda. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks. Welcome, sir. He is known as father of modern echocardiography for his innovation and has provided the cutting edge advancement in the field of cardio. He is respected across the world for his immense contribution in the field of medicine. Sir, we are honored to have you with us and we look forward to your knowledge for sharing and enable us to remain fit, especially during the COVID times. Once again, thank you very much, sir, for sparing your valuable time. We are also joined live from New York, Ms. Mona Johar, Chief Functional Nutritionist and co-founder of Mechanism Wellness USA. Welcome, Mona, to this webinar. Thank you very much. Our knowledge about food and its elements has benefited many in the world. And today also, she shall be guiding us with respect to inculcating good food habits in diet to ensure higher immunity. We also have with us Dr. S.K. Chopra, who we consider as part of Scope Only, who is a chief consultant cardiologist at Moulton Med City and is associated with many prestigious health institutes and programs. In fact, he is the guiding force behind this webinar which we are organizing today. Thank you, Dr. Chopra. Thank you for I mean, joining with Thank us. You, Thank you. We also welcome IPCA team, led by Dr. Anil Pari, 
and Mr. Johnny for their association for this program. We are grateful to our broadcast partner, Tata Sky, associating with us for this program, who will be telecasting this program on FEM, FEM Health, <coughs> so that the people who are not able to join today, they're able to draw benefit from the advice of medical experts, even after the webinar is over. Thank you, Asha Kapoorji and our team for attempting to ensure that the program reaches every household, thereby disseminating the knowledge to all. Ladies and gentlemen, while crisis is difficult and uncertain, the advantage is that it also forces us to think. It's the time we have to think. And I believe that we have to deal with the pandemic. Importance of health and well-being has been reiterated once more, which has forced us to think the tips for the healthy life as nothing looks as good as healthy feels. And SCOPE has organized this webinar to make sure that you all receive useful and important health tips as there is no better time than now to start living healthy and laying the foundation of happy life. I'm certain with the eminent panel we have today, today's webinar will give all of you a new sense of positivity by dispelling confusion for clarity, moving from despair to hope and optimism with a fit body and good health. With this, I once again welcome all of you to this international webinar on health. Please make best use of this webinar. Thank you. Thank you very much. Over to Sadiq. Thank you so much, sir. It's indeed very inspiring to hear you, sir, once more. Now, before I proceed further, I would like to inform all the participants that while the presentations are being made, you may type your questions in the chat box, that which will be taken up during the QA session by Dr. Chopra and other eminent panelists. Now, may I invite Mr. Johnny Edwin, Vice President IPCA, to kindly introduce Dr. H.K. Chopra to the participants. Over to you, Mr. Johnny. So good evening uh, to all the from US. Uh, we at IPCA with Life Collaboration Scope and Data Sky. Uh, it's my great pleasure and honor to welcome the eminent panelists also, and uh, great honor to welcome Dr. Navin C. Nanda, the father of echocardiography, for this forum from US. And my deep, very much honor to welcome the moderator and speaker for the to, day today, that is Dr. S.K. Chopra. Sir is a senior consultant cardiologist uh, at Mulchan Hospital, as already mentioned. Yes, a lot of academic credentials, which is behind us, and Sir has contributed immense in the academic part. And few to note about it is he has been an author for almost 31 textbooks in the field of cardiology, where he has covered various aspects. A lot of publications to his credit, and he was also a national president of CSI, a national president of the Indian Academy of Echocardiography Forum. He was also the country head of the American Heart Association, a national advisor to Tata Sky Family, and the chief editor of various journals, textbooks. And uh, more important is, and Sir was honored with various awards. And to mention a few, he was bestowed upon as an icon in the field of cardiology by Bharat Ratna, late Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam, a former president. And last year, he also received an icon of the century award in the field of cardiology and echocardiography by the Honorable Minister Dr. Harshwadhan uh, from the field of science and technology. So with this, uh, it's a great honor and pleasure to welcome to Dr. H.K. Chopra to moderate and to take the session ahead. So over to you, sir. <clears throat> Uh, thank you very much, uh, 
uh, Johnny Edwin and Mr. Atul Sopti, the DG of Scope, for the kind words. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, at the outset, I really welcome our international faculty, Professor Navin Sinanda, who has been my teacher, and he is the teacher of the teachers. As already mentioned by our DG, that he is the world father of echocardiography and cardiology. I feel we are humbled and privileged to have Naveen with us all the way from the United States, University of Alabama and Birmingham. He is a pioneer. We feel as a very proud as an Indian to have Naveen with us. We are also privileged to have with us Mona Johar, a very eminent nutritionist with almost 20 years of experience. She believes very firmly that nutrition is medicine and medicine is not a nutrition. She has an enormous experience on the various aspects of nutrition health and nutrition fitness. She is the chief functional nutritionist as well as the co-founder of a very prestigious organization by the name of Mechanism Wellness New York. Welcome Mona and welcome Naveen for this prestigious program. We have with us Dr. Anil Parikh, who is also the president of BIPCA, a very eminent scientist, who has a tremendous contribution to research of cardiology and a lot of publication all over the world. We have three important organizations who are participating uh, in the uh, program. And, uh, and uh, we want to say that these are the important organizations who are involved. The, The program is being organized by Scope and the Knowledge Partner, Jipka Limited, and the media partner is Tata Sky Fem Health. As you all know, if you really want to leave the corona crisis, you have to understand in 90 seconds the Bhagavad Gita. If you understand these 90 seconds, you can meet the corona crisis in a very effective manner. A wrong thinking is the only problem in life. We must improve our thinking. Right knowledge is the ultimate solution. Selflessness is the only way to progress and prosperity. Every act can be an act of prayer. Renounce the ego of individuality. We must have a commonness. Connect to the higher consciousness daily, on daily basis. Live what you learn. Never give up on yourself. Keep on working. Success will follow you. Value your blessings around you. You are with the nature and nurtured by the nature. See the divinity all around you. Have enough surrender to self, the truth as it is. Absorb your mind and heart in Supreme Lord. If you want to have a healthy heart and managing stress, detach from Maya and attached to divine. Live, live a lifestyle that matches you and your vision. Give priority to divinity if you want to be fit. Being good is a reward in itself. Choosing the right over the pleasant is a sign of power. Let's go and let's move to the union with the God. Ladies and gentlemen, we are in the grip of Corona crisis today. If you see the overall scenario of Corona, which I'm sure you all know by now, is almost touching one crore all over the world. 20% of one crore is in India, that's five lakhs. And out of these five lakhs, 20% is in Delhi, it's about 87,000. If you see the overall mortality, it's about 5% global mortality. But if you see the mortality in India, is about 3.2 percent. This is a scenario of corona. The mode of spread is very well known to all of you. It's by droplet infection. And the sign and symptoms, there is a little change. It's not only fever. It's not only cough. People may have body aches. They may have loss of smell, loss of taste. I had a patient a few days ago, 31-year-old chartered accountant. And he came to me with both heart attack and brain attack simultaneously, corona positive. That means all patients of corona have 
increased tendency for inflammation as well as for thrombosis. The clot can happen in the heart, it can happen in the lung, it can happen in the brain, it can happen in the veins. So we have to understand that the manifestation is differently. It may affect the kidney, it may affect the liver, it may also affect and cause the neuropsychiatric problems in the patients. Testing, I think uh, we should do in a lot of patients. The only way by which we can reduce the prevalence of uh, corona is universal precautions. When we talk of universal precaution, more hygiene in the form of hand hygiene, frequent hand washing. We should have a respiratory hygiene, putting on a mask, putting on a face shield, and having gargles morning and evening, a little steam inhalation so that the respiratory tract is clean. And the most important is social distancing. One to two meters is the criteria of social distancing, which may really help us to reduce the menace of corona in our country and worldwide. I think the preventive measures are only one. I, as a doctor, take a lot of precautions. I go to the hospital for two hours. When I go, I sanitize my car. I sanitize my handle of the car. When I use my stethoscope, I sanitize it. My BP instrument, my mobile phone, even my belt, even my wristwatch, everything needs to be sanitized. That's the way. Treatment, there is no treatment till today, and there is no vaccine till today. 100% proof. The only thing is we have to give a supportive treatment. And the supportive treatment in the form of prophylaxis, as recommended by Indian Council of Medical Research, logistic based, that all those people who are subjected to corona patients in their house, they can take SCQS for every week for three weeks. And those who are healthcare workers, who are working in the hospitals, and they are exposed to corona patients, they can take SCQS every week for eight weeks or 12 weeks. This is the extended uh, protocol, which is recommended by ICMR, and it is given. Besides that, they must take vitamin C on daily basis, they must take zinc on daily basis, and they must take a good immunological fitness diet, which I'm sure will be covered by Mona very soon. We must have a good immunity. We must take some immune boosters also. They are very, very effective. So far as the treatment is concerned, SCQS is a very old drug, 55-year-old drug. It has withstood the test of time. It is used in all the inflammatory disorders. For example, it is used in uh, SLE. It is used in arthritis, used in malaria, and also used in diabetes. But in prophylaxis, used in India very extensively. So far as the treatment is concerned, there are little controversy. Some studies have shown the benefit of SAQS. Some have shown uh, no benefits of SAQS. So it consensus have to come. And I'm sure more data will come. This data which I'm quoting is from France, from Italy, and China, which favors for what study from US recently published has shown there's a little controversy so we need to have more data to reach to a consensus so far as the treatment is concerned. Drugs like Febiflu is available now in the mild and moderate symptoms, and drugs like Remdesivir is also available to treat the complicated cases. So these are all the treatment facilities which are there for coronavirus. But my request to each and every one of you, all the members of public sector and the government, that we must have universal precautions. That is the only method of halting the rising menace. It's very important. Healthy heart is the need of the hour. As I mentioned to you, the clotting tendency is more in corona patients. And we must understand it is the corona which affect the lungs. It causes coronary lung thrombosis and may cause pulmonary embolism, affect the heart, may affect the coronary vessels, and may affect the brain vessels and the veins. All can be affected. We see here the lungs, how there is a synchrony. When there is a hypoxia occurs, it may cause increased tendency for arrhythmia. It may also cause myocarditis, heart attacks, and we see here the coronary vessels are very tiny in millimeters, and it can be affected by corona. This is the electrical system of the heart, and we can see here how the pacemaker works in our system, the electrical system, from SA node to AV node and goes down. When a patient is affected by corona, they may have tachyarrhythmias, they may have palpitation, 
and they may have sudden cardiac death also. So it's very important that we have to understand if anybody has fever and palpitation, we must see the oxygen saturation at home and temperature record, and we should have a home monitoring. If the symptoms are more, they should go to the hospitalization. Pumping of the heart, heart is very, very important. Risk factors are very, very important. We all should know if we are having a, in the corona era, if we have these risk factors, we should be more careful. Age, anybody beyond 60, we have to be more careful. Sex, after 45, both male and females are equally prone to have the heart problems. We can't choose our parents. If there's a family history of stress, we are more prone to get into uh, genetic issues. The modifiable factors are negative stress. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to give a very important message today. In Corona pandemic, we should not make it a stress pandemic. We should not make it a fever, fever fear pandemic. We should not make it a panic pandemic. It's very important. We should learn how to cope with the stress. Once we understand how to cope with the stress, I'm sure we'll witness to it and we'll be very calm and there will not be much problem. Because by stress, we liberate the negative jittery molecules. There is increase in palpitation, increase in blood pressure, and more prone to get heart problems and complications. Other factors like obesity, I'm sure we'll discuss in detail. High cholesterol, Dr. Naveen is going to discuss. Lack of exercise, tobacco, diet part is going to be discussed in detail by Mona. Uncontrolled hypertension and diabetes are more prone to get a complications of Corona, especially after the age of 60, and alcohol consumption should be very low as possible. As I mentioned to you, these are all the risk factors, age, sex, as I already mentioned, genetics, and I mentioned to you stress. We must keep our temper under control. We should not be stressed. We should be very happy going. We must have attitude of gratitude. We must make sure that we liberate our happy molecules in the form of acetylcholine, in the form of serotonin, in the form of endorphins, and not epinephrine and not epinephrine or cortisol. See the data. The data is from the Mayo Clinic, showing if there's an obesity, you're more prone to get heart attack, high blood pressure, premature deaths, and many problems. This is what happening in India, that we are falling victim to the metabolic syndrome and obesity, whether it's pear-shaped or it is apple-shaped or are prone to get more stress during corona. And I think it's very important. This is what people are just sitting on the dais or sitting on the chair and are sedentary and smoking and drinking and eating the fast food and becoming a victim of obesity, diabetes and hypertension and getting complication of corona. This will be dealt in detail by Naveen that cholesterol get deposited in the blood vessels and may cause the problems. People don't walk out of the car and call the driver then they go to have the clothes from the laundry see this sedentary habits and that cause stasis of blood and cause tendency for clotting. Tobacco, smoking or health, you can't have both. This has been expressed by various organizations which are national and international. I'm sure we are very fond of samosas and pakoras and halwas in India. I'm sure we like to have the comments from Mona on this. Blood pressure is a very, very important. I personally feel in India, Hypertension as well in the world and India is like a global tsunami. Sugar control is very, very important. Alcohol, as I mentioned to you, we should not take more alcohol. Binge drinking is very bad, may cause palpitation, hypertension, increased cholesterol, and may damage the heart, cause cardiomyopathy, and cause even sudden death. Evaluation of heart function, we all should understand. If you're 40, every one year, go for a checkup. If you're 50, Every six months, you go for a checkup. Have your blood pressure checked, sugar checked, and you must have what we call a heart work plan. This contains a battery of investigations. This should be done. It's very, very important. You have to understand the ECG is done if your pulse is missing and fast. EMT, echo is very important parameters. We can see everything of the heart within. The anatomy and the physiology of the heart can be seen, how the heart works, how the valves are functioning, and what is the pumping action. We can see great details. This is a real uh, approach in patients to know at rest what is the problem with the heart. Everything can be analyzed within a short fraction of time. Stress thallium in some of the patients, we have to understand there are only two coronary arteries of millimeters. Whole world, we are spending billions of dollars 
how to prevent the thrombus or a clot in the coronary arteries. We see here the coronary angiogram. We see the CT angio. We can see the calcium scoring. Those who have a high calcium score index, they are more prone during corona crisis to have angina or a massive heart attack. And holter monitoring, if you have a tendency for misbeats or palpitation, and those who have low heart rate, pacemakers, some people have pacemakers, they are more prone to get problems during the corona. What is a heart attack is very important, we should know, because in the corona crisis, the treatment is changed. People don't go for angioplasty straight away. They go for clot busters first. This slide is just showing the cholesterol deposits, which I'm sure Naveen is going to cover. And on the top of it, a clot formation. And you can see a discoloration of the heart causing the heart attack. So we must learn how to attack the heart attack and what are the symptoms of the chest pain. If you have fever because of corona, if you have a cough and you have chest pain or heaviness in chest or tightness in chest, please see your doctor and call the hospital. Don't waste your time calling a chemist or calling a jokal practitioner. Straight away, go to the hospital and call how to attack heart attack. You have to understand that. Until DCG, pre-hospital, one can take aspirin or clopidogrel or various statins, sorbitrate or clot busters. Ambulance to the hospital and straight away, you should reach the hospital without wasting any time because time is a muscle. How to prevent heart attack is the main agenda of my presentation. Because our question is how to manage stress. Preventing heart attack is managing stress. And there are various methods by which we can manage the stress. We all understand that we are to integrate the mind, body, and consciousness. If we have this approach of integrating mind, body, and consciousness, we are going to have a healthy heart. We have to understand that we have 60 trillion cells in our body, and there are 6 trillion chemical reactions with 60 neuropeptides. Each cell acts like a cosmic computer and our mind is a programmer and our consciousness is like a cosmic computer. We are all the hologram of the universe and the universe is our hologram. There has to be rhythmic uh, concordance between us and the nature. And we must make sure that we are nurtured by the nature and we must nurture the nature. Ladies and gentlemen, I must tell you today, we can block our coronary arteries and we can unblock them only by our thought process and our mindset. This is very important that we must understand that we are the holographic reality. As is the atom, so is the universe. As is the microcosm, so is the macrocosm. As is the universal body, so is the cosmic body. And as is the universal mind, so is the cosmic mind. In Hindi, we call it Yatha Pende, Yatha Brahmande. Healthy heart is synonymous with life. If no health of the heart, no life. It is synonymous mystically, mythically, etymologically, alchemically, archetypally, biochemically, bosonically, protonically, neutronically, atomically, and at the level of the quantum soup. Who we are, we have to understand. If we don't know who we are, we cannot manage the stress of corona at all. We have to understand that there are three bodies, physical body, a subtle body, and a causal body. And the physical body has a matter field and the energy field. And the subtle body is mind, intellect, and ego. And the causal body has soul and spirit. We need to integrate them. Balance is required. If they are balanced, we are not going to fall victim to so-called education or panic. Somebody may ask me, what is consciousness? Consciousness is a unified field. It perceives, it conceives, it constructs, it executes, and governs the whole cosmos within us and outside us. It emits, it receives, and transmits the impulses of intelligence all the time. It is just like a rose flower is an expression of consciousness in front of us. We can say the consciousness is like a thinker of thought, idea generator, it's non-local, or as a field of infinite intelligence. If I to confuse you, I can also define this radically, ambiguous, ceaselessly flowing quantum soup is consciousness. It's a very high quantum mechanics. Mind body to understand consciousness is like a cosmic computer and our mind is a programmer. It is our mind. We need to program our mind. We need to have a mindset to have perfect choices. And our cells of the cosmic computer and environment within us 
and environment outside us. Stress management is a need of the hour. We can see here exercise every day, laughter, fitness protocols, no smoking and no alcohol or low alcohol. New mantra for healthy heart is by spirituality and consciousness based. This is a very important slide. This is a full chapter of the book. I've given it one slide. We should be all the time in the parasympathetic mode and not sympathetic mode. An angry man, aggressive man, agitated, arrogant, anxious, ego, cynical, with hatredness, jealousy, competitiveness, grief, vengeance. They have high blood pressure, palpitation, clotting, a massive heart attack and sudden death. I see a lot of patients come to me from the high court or from the MDs or CMDs from various industries because they fall victim into a sympathetic mode and liberate a lot of epinephrine and norepinephrine. We should be always in parasympathetic mode and this is possible only if we do a meditation and a regular yoga that we have mindfulness meditation and various forms of meditation like transcendental meditation or primordial sound meditation or Raja Yoga meditation or Vipassana meditation or Gregorian chanting, so many. A regular exercise, consumption of fruits, vegetables, nuts, no tobacco, no alcohol, all these things are necessary if you want to be healthy. And live in your heart by meditation. I do every day chakra meditation. I'm doing it for almost last 25 years. So chakra meditation is very important. We have energy zones, seven energy zones. We always try to meditate on them and they make it very healthy. Time is short. I can't go to the details. Energize your heart intelligence by regular meditation every day. This is an example of Lodi Garden. I go there every day and I really enjoy the nature. I devote at least one hour every day in Lodi Garden. And see the lovely. You be with the nature, flowers, plants, galaxy, everything. All the eight limbs of yoga should be practiced. We should know what is yama, do's and don'ts, nema, self-discipline, asana, various postures, pranayama, breathing exercises, pratihara, contemplation, dharna, dhyana, and samadhi. Yoga is not only asanas, misconcept. It's a practice of human being as a whole discipline. All yoga is necessary. We have to understand the Ayurvedic form of personalities in you and me. Pitta personalities are very, very aggressive personalities. They get plaque rupture in the heart. Kapha personalities, they get a lot of cholesterol deposits and hypertension, diabetes and heart failure. And Vata personalities get palpitation. We should not be Dukhira. Most of us are Dukhira all the time. They are helpless, hopeless and worthless. We should be all the time Sukhira, a positive person, full of opportunities, optimism and always excited and confident and will be working all the time. These are the two Mahabantras what we call as KFP versus BFP. KFP means kya farak padta hai and BFP means bahut farak padta hai. Respond, but do not react. Pehle tolo, phir bolo. Sometimes casual use of words can humiliate others. Happiness is very important. Some people give happiness wherever they go. And some are those who give happiness wherever they go or whenever they go. So I think it's very important. We have to understand and act in present. We should forget the past and don't worry about the future. Future is going to be very bright. We must manage the present only. Your attitude is your altitude, which altitude you want to go. Stress management will lead to tranquilizer, energizer, stabilizer, equalizer, happinessizer, and equipizer. Those who don't manage stress, they have toxic emotions, toxic behavior, toxic relationship, toxic consumption, and become a toxic being and then becomes a counterproductive organization. Where is the corporate health? If such kind of people are there, if such kind of behavior is there in the corporate, there cannot be a health. So discipline is the need of the art in every public sector undertaking for any corporate. I personally believe absolute consciousness is the inner calmness. You can see my senior teacher, Navin Nanda. I have yet to see him angry, agitated. I know him for the last 40 years now. Always cool and calm and achieved everything of the world. Attitude of gratitude is very important. Bhagavad Gita says, wisdom is what you are and not what you have. And we should be in action all the time. We should not be worried about Corona. We should work. I go to the hospital every day. I'm on telemedicine, teleconsultation. I asked Naveen on the other day, what do you do? 
He said, I'm on teleconsultation. I get so many calls from the hospital. He gets about four o'clock in the morning and work for the whole day. At this age, you can understand, we have to be in action all the time and have renunciation in action and not renunciation of action. Do the best and leave the rest. Exercise every day for 30 minutes, walking, walking, jogging, and don't have a fitness paradox, not climbing the stairs, but using the escalators. 30 minutes daily without a miss, not a single day. Walking, walking, jogging, cycling, swimming, dancing, skiing, treadmilling. I believe exercise is a must. You are not able to go out, go out because of Corona, have a cycle at home and do uh, yoga or exercise at home. I do it every day on the terrace, which I never went before. Breathe in the fresh morning. <clears throat> this is Lodi Garden. I enjoy the nature. People say, who is not rich? Everything is there in the Lodi Garden. You don't need a farmhouse. A free farmhouse is available for you. I was attending a rotary meeting. People were talking about the farmhouse. Who has got four acre farmhouse, five acre farmhouse? And I told them I have 21 acre farmhouse. My farmhouse is a Lodi garden. I think this is very important to understand. See this. Most of us are busy, busy, and busy in earning money and losing health. And then we are busy, busy, and busy in losing money and trying to earn health. It's gone. Health is not in notes, health is not in money, health is not in bungalow, health is not in gold, health is not in silver. Health is all in your choices. Healthy heart, healthy mind. This is very important. Everything is expression of health. See here, what is happening in India? This is uh, Mona. I like to have your attention on this. This is what is happening. People are eating pakoda, samosas, jalebis in different parts of India. And they are eating Ohas, I mean, what is happening in India? And if I show you another um, map of India, the omega-3 acid deficiency is 100%. 100% Indians are deficient by omega-3. Why viral will not attack you? You are all bound to have inflammation, all bound to have problems. See this, what is happening in India? Samosas, people are very fond of samosas. You go to Supreme Court or High Court, you put it six, six samosas. I don't know what is happening. This is what happening in the diet we talk. I don't know how much it means. Mona can tell us better. Dry fruits, vegetables, and nuts. This is what happens. If you go to any place like this, sweet meat shop, a lot of rush. People go every day and they become obese. We should have fruits, vegetables, cereals, no meat. These are all the recommendation by AHA, pistachio, walnut, almonds are healthy nuts. Laughter therapy is very important. People don't laugh. A baby laughs 400 times a day, but an adult, not even four times a day. And the laughter is a tranquilizer. It's an energizer. It's an equalizer. It's a happinessizer. But where is the time to laugh? And please don't laugh at anybody else. Laugh at yourself. When I go to Lodi Garden, I see people are laughing unconditionally. That's the best laughter. Dancing, very good therapy. If you really want to be fit, dancing is the best mode of therapy to make you fit and less obese. I believe a lot in music therapy. I'm very fond of singing and playing on conch, conch blowing, huge data. I think uh, passage of time we cannot discuss. Spa and massage therapy is excellent. This is before and after. One of my patients who was on 11 drugs, hypertensive diabetes at the age of 32, just by a lifestyle modification, no medication, no diabetes, no high blood pressure, and no high cholesterol. Another person, everybody knows, Adnan Sami, where he was and what he is now. And see here, Mukesh Ammani's son, what he was and what he is now. See this, the difference, only by modification of diet. This is what happening in India now. See this, morbid obesity. A guy is making his dog treadmill. He doesn't want to do treadmill. See the mindset of people here. And see here what is happening in the United States and UK. Obesity, morbid obesity. And see this. On one, on one side we do angioplasty, and one side we talk of healthy heart optimization. On the other side, there is a mushrooming of McDonald's. McDonald's is number one toxic food. We all should know it. And there is a lot of data to support. We don't leave our pets. We give them ice cream. 
can make them contract prematurely and get a joint problems. This is what happening and we're falling to stress. To conclude, ladies and gentlemen, we must exercise daily if you want to cope with the stress in Corona. Balanced diet, no tobacco, no alcohol. Overcome stress by yoga and meditation, as I already mentioned. What's the take home message? No pot belly, please. Be cholesterol fit, with Dr. Navin Nanda is going to talk. Control your blood pressure, control your diabetes. Periodic health checkup, as I mentioned, after 40 and after 50. Don't go to a doctor when you got a heart attack or brain attack, then it's too late. Actively participate in the preventive health program. Heart wellness is growth and productivity. Never be in the cage, always be out of the cage. Amitabh Bachchan said, be creative with a healthy heart, the world will follow you. Ethics and discipline is a cosmic continuum. The only way to heart wellness, happiness and nirvana. Our former president of India, Abdul Kalam said, if you salute your duty, you need not salute anybody. If you pollute your duty, you will have to salute everybody and you will be stressed. Swami Vivekananda once said, we are what we eat and what we think. And both are expressions of nutrition. So here we have Mona, who will tell us more about the nutrition, lifestyle optimization, so that we get divinity. Wisdom is what you are and not what you have. It is very important. We have to understand what we are. We should not bother whether we don't have Mercedes or a big bungalow or a farmhouse. Don't worry about it. Everything is yours. God has given you. But you should be healthy and eat the right food at the right time, at the right place, in the right dose, in the right environment, as will be expressed by Mona soon. To conclude, ladies and gentlemen, I will mention this. As is the quantum soup, so is the quark. As is the quark, so is the boson. And as is the boson, so is the proton, neutron, and electron. And as the proton, neutron, and electron, so is the intelligence. As is the intelligence, so are the perceptions, thoughts, and interpretations. And as is the choice, so is the mind. As is the mind, so is the body. As are the mind and body, so is the lifestyle. And as is the lifestyle, so is the health of the heart. And as is the health of the heart, so is the world around you without stress. Please understand, everything is originating at the level of atoms. You have to stabilize the atoms only by your intelligence, by your mindset. Thank you very much for your kind attention. I will just have play one uh, simple video and I hope I'll be able to play this. This is the secret of happiness and success by Swami Vivekananda, who said how to reach God and be stress-free. The answer is you must be pure and help anyone who comes to you as much as lies in your power. And this is a good karma. Who has a time to do good karma? By the power of this, the heart becomes pure, which is called a Chitta Shuddhi. And then Shiva, who is residing in every one of us, in every cell of our body, becomes manifest. He is always in the heart of everyone. If there is a dirt and dust on mirror, we cannot see our image. So ignorance and wickedness are the dirt and dust. They are on the mirror of our hearts. Selfishness is the main sin. Thinking of ourselves all the time. He who thinks, I will eat first and I will have more money than anybody else. I will possess everything. He who thinks like this, I will go get the heaven before others. I will get bhakti before others is a selfish man. Never be selfish in life. Then you will be always stressed and Corona will surround you all the time. The unselfishness man says, I'll be lost. I don't care to go to heaven. I will go to hell, even, even if by doing so that I can help my brothers and sisters. Swami Vivekananda was only 32 when he died. He had a rheumatic heart disease. The, this unselfishness is the best 
test of religion. He who has more of this unselfishness is more spiritual and close to God and stress-free from this world. Whether he is learned or ignorant, he is nearer to God than anybody else, wherever he knows it or not. <clears throat> and if a man is selfish, even though he has visited all the temples and the pilgrimages, they are useless if he is selfish. It's like a leopard. He is still further off from God. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Thank you. With this, ladies and gentlemen, I'll request our next speaker, Professor Naveen Sinanda, who is the face of cardiology in the world. He is a very eminent person, and the topic he's going to cover is on cholesterol fitness. We know bad cholesterol and high, good cholesterol, everyone knows about it. Which is a good cholesterol? which is a bad cholesterol, what are their levels, and how they get oxidized, and how they get deposited in the arteries will be spoken by none other than Professor Navin Sinanda. Dr. Nanda, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, let's see if I can get my slides. Uh, Okay, thank you. Can you all hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah, okay. Well, uh, when it looks at uh, cholesterol, uh, that is really the cornerstone for prevention uh, for heart attacks, uh, stroke, as well as any vascular problems you may have in the in your lower extremities, like the legs. So what cholesterol is, really it's a lipid or fatty deposit uh, in the inner walls of the blood vessels throughout the body, actually. And But of course, we are more concerned with the uh, the deposits uh, in the heart as well as in the brain arteries, so to speak. Of course, this just show you how a person having a heart attack with severe chest pain. And uh, what happens here is that uh, uh, the, this is actually normal blood vessel on the top. And then if you look at down here, here's the cholesterol has deposited in the blood vessel. So what it does is narrows it. And as the narrowing becomes uh, more and more, uh, the blood supply is compromised. You have less blood supply going to the heart, and, the, and therefore you get a heart attack. But there's another way also you get a heart attack, and that is what happens is that there may not be much of cholesterol deposition, maybe mild cholesterol deposition, and, uh, but the pack, the cholesterol which gets deposited, so to speak, is very vulnerable. In other words, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's re it will really burst easily, and uh, so you have patients who may have normal stress echocardiograms or may have a normal uh, coronary artery angiograms, and the next day they develop a heart attack because what happens, the small deposits of cholesterol are vulnerable, so they break, and as soon as they break, rupture, the body thinks there's a break in the vessel wall, we must repair it. So the body sends a clot, uh, uh, forms clot around that uh, uh, broken portion, and once the clot is formed, the clot, if it is large, will again narrow the vessel, and you have a heart attack. So about 50% of uh, heart attacks which occur uh, have only a small amount of cholesterol deposition, but the plaque is unstable. We call it unstable plaque, which tends to rupture. And the other 50% of the heart attacks occur when actually the, uh, the vessel gets narrowed by the cholesterol buildup, which uh, slowly and progressively narrows the blood vessel. So just to give you some idea about uh, cholesterol deposition. The normal levels of blood level, normal blood levels are easy to remember. The total cholesterol, which is bad actually, we call it, it should be less than 199. And if you take out the one from there, that is the LDL cholesterol, which is very, very important, which is called the low uh, density um, uh, lipoprotein cholesterol, which is really the bad cholesterol, and that should really be 99 milligrams uh, per deciliter, 99 or less in your body. Uh, nowadays, uh, we are also saying that rather than being less than 99, we should further treat it, go actually under less than, less than 77 milligrams per cent, and there is some data coming up, especially if you have had a previous heart attack or you have some risk factors like diabetes, then it really should, we should really go aim to go for less than 50 milligrams 
Uh, so really, this is very, very important. And uh, so we need to know how to actually reduce your cholesterol less than 99 and preferably less than 77. And in some patients, even less than 50 milligrams per liter. One other thing that has come up is we call it the triglycerides. Those are also fatty components in the blood. And that should really be, should be really be 100, less than 150 milligrams per cent. And that's another, obviously we didn't have any good uh, medis- medications to treat this, but now more medications are coming up. So you can reduce this uh, triglycerides a lot. There's also a good cholesterol in us, and that is called the high HDL cholesterol, uh, which should be more than 40 milligrams also. But most, most important thing is to remember your LDL cholesterol, that's what we want to target most of the time, to be less than 99 milligrams per cent. Now, this is, it looks like a complicated slide, but it's not actually. So if you look at, when you look at the blood, uh, blood actually cholesterol and fat in blood, you have the diameter here, which means tell you the size of the particle, and here you have how dense it is. So the one which you want to target is really the low um, LDL here, the LDL particles, as we mentioned to you, uh, low density uh, lipoprotein particles, and so this is what you want to really target. Uh, this is really the good cholesterol, but here also in Indians, now especially, you know, we know that Indians are more prone to heart attack, heart attacks occur earlier, and it's also more malignant, which means the chances of complications from heart attack and death from heart attack are high in Indians, in Asian Indians, which uh, Asian Indians living in India, as well as Asian, living, uh, in Asian Indians living abroad, such as in the United States. And uh, there again, there's one component of HDL, which is supposed to be pro-inflammatory and is not really good for Indians. So when we look at the cholesterol levels in uh, other ethnic groups like the whites, and we look at Asian Indians, uh, the, many of them have high cholesterol and they're all similar. So why Indians are getting higher or more premature heart attack? There are two factors which one we have found. One is that in, 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 in this LDL cholesterol, which is small, there is one other cholesterol which is dense, but also smaller particles. And this is actually more atherogenic. In other words, this is more likely to produce heart attacks. And if you look at this, this is actually higher in Asian Indians as compared to the whites. And how did we do this? Because uh, we did this in the United States in around 1990s, around there. Uh, what we had actually in the United States, there were only two companies which were looking at the subfractions of these colors. So we could look at LDL, we could look at the HDL, uh, but we could not look at the subfractions of this cholesterol. So there are only two companies uh, in the United States. One was in Birmingham, Alabama, where I'm there, and one was in California. And so what we found, this small component cholesterol, this small, dense, small size for cholesterol, which is more dangerous, was higher in Asian Indians as compared to whites. Also, people have found that this HDL component, one of the HDL components uh, is, is more uh, pro-inflammatory in Asian Indians as compared to that. So there are some just to give you some idea that uh, cholesterol is very, very important, but even more important in our Asian Indians. Uh, one Dr. Other Nanda, Dr. Is, Nanda I'm, I really, I'm sorry to interrupt, but your slides are not visible. Hi. Oh, really? Okay, I don't know. Let yeah. me just check, check again. So please share your so, screen, sir. Uh, so I'll have to go back. I don't know, the, the screen, uh, screen share doesn't come here. Let me see if I can go back, uh, see where we are. Let me escape actually here and see where we are. Uh, uh, maybe I have to go back in again, or let me just unfold uh, this and then here. And so you need to slide the background and just. Uh, Share screen, sir, later. Uh, go in the background. I'm going to the background here. Let's see if we can uh, are these. Uh, uh, let me go back into the Zoom, maybe. Should I go back into the Zoom, maybe? That's maybe the yeah, thing. Yeah, you need to go to Zoom and again, just share screen. Uh, when I go to Zoom, I'm not getting the. Uh, uh, Please accept the request, sir. Grant permission here or something? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, please, maybe. Please share your slides, sir. Go to share screen button. Okay, now should I share? And now I'm coming to share it. Can I share my screen or something, or go to slides? We are technical guys. Please share your slides, sir. No, no, no. no share my slide. We no, go to share. Technical guy is doing it. 
How about now? Can you see the slides? Yes, yes we can see now. We can see. So we can now. see your slides now, sir. Uh, please go ahead, sir. I'm so sorry to interrupt, sir. No, 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 no problem. Good, you told me. I would have been speaking without anyone looking at the slide. Please go ahead. So I'll, I think I'll just go to this one here. Uh, maybe this is important to explain here again one more time. So it'll take me a little more time here. But just show you, this is a normal uh, artery. Uh, should I start my video, it says, or may I put later? I'm going to say later here, right? Uh, it's come to say the start your video. Okay, let me start the video. Okay. Uh, can you all see my slides still? Yeah, we can we see you. Can you see my slides? Yeah, yeah, we can, okay. can see your slides. We can see you, sir. Please go ahead. Okay, very good. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so this is the normal artery here. And when cholesterol deposits, it, de it deposits here like this. will deposit here when you have cholesterol. And that would narrow the blood vessels. And of course, as the narrow gets progressively higher, you block the blood vessel. So you have no blood supply to the heart. And therefore, you get a heart attack. That happens in about 50% of the patients. But the remaining 50% of the patients, you have some cholesterol there. But that cholesterol deposition, we call it the plaque there, is unstable. And if it is unstable, it will rupture. And once it ruptures, then the body tries to actually uh, plug it. And when the body tries to plug it with a clot, the clot may be large. And that itself, the clot itself, actually the body is trying to help you. But by, while helping, it actually is not helping you at all because it may actually further narrow this blood vessel. And therefore, you get a heart attack. So sometimes you have a patient who has a normal uh, coronary angiogram maybe normal stress echocardiogram, maybe one day after a normal coronary ang artery angiogram, he may develop a heart attack, and that's because of these plaques actually rupturing and uh, clot forming, and when the clot forms, that may narrow the blood vessel, and you get a heart attack. So that's uh, why, just to show you that cholesterol is uh, very, very important, but also why some patients who may not have, uh, uh, you know, who may not have that much of deposition of cholesterol in the heart, and yet may get actually heart attack. And here are the normal blood levels. Uh, it's very easy to remember the total cholesterol of 199 milligrams or less than that. And then if you take out the one, you have 99 milligrams. And this is the most important cholesterol we have, which produces heart attack. And that is called the low density lipoprotein cholesterol, for short form LDL cholesterol. It's a bad cholesterol. Uh, you should really try to get it down to 99 milligrams, uh, milligrams per cent. And then actually we now feel that rather than 99, if you go even further down, less than 77 milligrams per percent, that even further reduces the chances of a heart attack or stroke. And in some patients, especially of some uh, factors like diabetes, or you have uh, uh, high blood pressure, one really, or a previous heart attack, one should even go down to less than 50 milligrams per cent. So the less you, the LDL cholesterol you have, the better you have. Uh, one other cholesterol, which is not a uh, factor in the blood, which is not very good, is the triglycerides. And there again, you should get it down to 150 milligrams. Previously, it was very difficult to get it down, but now we have new medications which can actually uh, reduce this triglyceride level. We have a good cholesterol called HDL cholesterol, which is supposed to be good cholesterol. It's good to have it more than 40 milligrams per cent. The higher you have, again, that reduces the chances of uh, heart attack. But it's not very easy to increase that uh, good cholesterol. Uh, you can increase it by exercise. Even the statins, uh, some drugs will increase it but not so easy to increase it to a very high level. So here is a graph which is very, very important to show you. Where I think I'll actually go that way. Here is the density of these particles in the blood, the lipid particles, the fat particles in the blood, the plasma lipoprotein species, and here is the diameter. So here we have the low density cholesterol here. Uh, these, these are the ones. And uh, here we have the good cholesterol, HDL cholesterol. Now in the low density cholesterol here, low density um, uh, level cholesterol, uh, if you look at uh, whites, as well as uh, you look at uh, Asian Indians, who are actually Asian Indians, not, not, not only live in India, but they live everywhere in the world, including the United States. If you look at the Asian Indians, this particular uh, smaller uh, particle here, smaller, denser particle of cholesterol is higher in these Asian Indians than in the, than in the whites. And this is particularly, uh, this, level, this one is particularly uh, prone to heart attack. So it's very, very important to reduce your LDL cholesterol, especially in Asian Indians even, much more even than in the whites here. When it comes to the good cholesterol, there's one other factor in the good cholesterol which they found is pro-inflammatory, which is a little damaging uh, in, to Indians, which is there in Asian Indians, not, not very well uh, uh, seen uh, in the whites. So that's also another thing to remember. Now, in addition to this LDL cholesterol, what has become more important nowadays 
even uh, as important is to look at this LP small a particle. But that again, Asian Indians tend to have more than in the whites. And this is also prone to uh, heart attacks because sometimes you reduce your LDL cholesterol very much, but you're not taking care of the LP small a. And that, th that is a factor for heart attacks. So we have to attack this also, but I'm not going to cone down on this. I'm going to cone down more on this uh, LDL cholesterol. So this is very, very important to remember. It's a very good slide here to show that. So what, is, what, what about the cholesterol? How effective cholesterol has been, in, for example, in the United States? Uh, by 2019, 2018, the good news is just only 11 over, about 11% 11 of uh, persons above the age of 20 years had high cholesterol. Remaining had low cholesterol. The bad news is still one in 10 people have high cholesterol, even though there is a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, publicity going on, decreasing our cholesterol, still about 11% of people do not have low cholesterol. And of course, it's, uh, this is similar to for both sexes and all ethnic groups, including Asian Indians also, are included in this 11% of people uh, who had actually, who still had, uh, have high cholesterol. And of course, we have also found that women are less likely to get medications, for cholesterol, heart problems, or stroke, and uh, some recent studies have come. So when it comes to cholesterol fitness, which we are talking about the cholesterol, what are the cornerstones? There are three cornerstones here. One is physical activity. Number two is diet, which I think Mona is going to talk quite a bit more on that. And the other one is medications called statins. So these are the three things you have to really good. And when it comes to physical activity, you have to also look at mental activity, as has been shown by Dr. Chopra very well in his masterful Presentation, meditation, also we need to think about healthy diet, could see a dietitian uh, like Mona here, and then we go to medications called statins. Let me deal one by one with all of this. What about the physical activity? Well, physical activity, what important thing is you should have minimum of 30 minute moderate intensity activity at least five times per week. That's the guidelines we give. Should have brisk walk, jogging, bicycle, swimming, gardening, but also what about the ladies? Heavy housework also is important. That actually helps a lot. And if you can't do this, you go for 10 minutes burst of activity three times, three times. So what do you do every 10, uh, in, in a day, every 10 minutes, just go and walk around, jog, go climb up the stairs and climb down. And of course, you have to monitor body weight, enough sleep and make sure pollution is also a very important factor now. And uh, we cannot, sometimes we cannot actually uh, do anything to that. But most important thing is, even if you can't all do this, get moving is the a, is a, is a two word, very important words. Get moving. Whenever you are sitting in front of your desk a whole day, or you are actually a couch potato sitting in front of the TV, once in a while, get moving. Go around, move around. If you can't do any of all this, uh, you can't do that, at least get moving. So most important thing is, two words very important for physical activity, get moving is the most important activity here. What about the healthy diet? Remember, healthy diet is, uh, what you do is, you forget the knives, go for forks and spoons, which means forget your red meat and go for forks and spoon, go for vegetarian diet here. So go for plant-based uh, is very important. Plant-based actually diet is more important. Limit your red and processed meat. Uh, this will add years to your life. And when it comes to animal proteins, fish is very important. And meat is not that very important. Some of the dairy products are also not, not that important, but have to be eaten in moderation. And the plant proteins are from soy, vegetables, beans, nuts, etc. They all are plant proteins. So actually, one of my, you know, as you know, the cardiac surgeons have very few words. One of my patients went to him, had coronary artery bypass, and then he told me that I've got high cholesterol. What should I do? And he said, eat grass. Eat grass. So he comes to me and says, what do you mean eat grass? I said, eat grass means eat plant-based food, plant-based food. So his word was eat grass, you'll be fine, you know? So that's very, very important. So one, as when it, uh, when it comes to physical activity, get moving. When it comes to healthy diet, eat grass. So that r remaining things you reduce. So if you do all this, the risk of death is reduced by 50%, half, 50%, uh, which is a large, very large reduction in risk. So vegetarian breakfast. Now vegetarian breakfast doesn't mean it's all very, uh, very, um, uh, very useful. It, it has all. It can be unhealthy also. Fruit juices are unhealthy. Refined grains are unhealthy. Potatoes are unhealthy. Sugar sweetened beverages are healthy. Coconut oil. That's why you have in, in Kerala. You have they eat a lot of vegetable food, but they also take coconut oil. Coconut oil is very bad for heart. Saturated and trans fats, of course, when you like bhajias, you keep on using the same oil again and again. That's also bad. And desserts, of course, limit the desserts. So uh, that is important. So vegetarian diet doesn't mean it's all good. You have to re really remember some, are, some of the vegetarian diet is also unhealthy. 
most important thing, do not skip breakfast. Do not skip breakfast, another thing to remember. Skipping breakfast nearly doubles risk of heart-related deaths. Doubles the risk of heart-related deaths. So do not skip breakfast, very important. And I mentioned to you, not all vegetarian foods are, uh, are actually healthy. Now let's go to the third thing. Uh, one important thing about the physical activity, all the guidelines mentioned about exercise, no one mentions about taking care of your teeth and gums. Very important to take care of their teeth and gums because the gums, if you have uh, uh, diseased gums, that is associated with heart attacks. So take care of your gums. All the guidelines I've looked at, ACC, American College of Cardiomic Heart Association, do not mention about taking care of the gum. Very important to take care of the gums and the teeth, very, very important. So that's something to remember also. Now, what are statins? Now, statins, is a, uh, very easy to remember statins, what it is. Uh, the liver actually produces cholesterol. And what statin does is to actually block the liver, tends to block the liver from producing cholesterol. So your cholesterol level will go down. Because we need, there is always normal cholesterol in the blood, which you need it. But uh, this uh, statin will block it. Now, when were the statins approved? They were approved over 30 years ago, in 1987. There are at least seven statins on the market. So these drugs have been there for a long time. As a matter of fact, somebody was telling me the other day that uh, just like we have uh, fluoride in water and other things, uh, maybe they should put statin in all the water supplies. So everybody gets some dose of statins. I mean, just a joke, but just to give an idea, the statins are very, very important because they are the, they are the in addition to the lifestyle changes I mentioned, statins are one particular drug which will reduce your cholesterol. It not only prevents your first heart attack, which we call primary prevention, but it reduces the risk of a second event, second heart attack or second stroke, and that also, but very important thing to remember, I was talking about the ducts which are vulnerable, which can break even when there is not that much of cholesterol in your, in, inside of your blood vessels, they break, and that stability, their instable plaques, that stable, this, these statins also tend to stabilize plaques. That's very, very important, so that's in, in, important to remember. So patients who do not have too much cholesterol in the blood vessels and narrowing, but still have heart attacks, statins will tend to prevent those heart attacks. So that is very important about statins. So when you go, now first thing, so when you want to take statins, obviously you must see your physician, very important. But you have to be very honest with your physician. Honesty is the best policy. To be very honest with what you eat, what you take, tobacco, smoking, other recreational drugs, whatever. Be very honest with your physician. Because if you are honest with your physician, he'll be able to give you the best advice. That's very important. And also, ask questions. If you don't follow anything, anything in your mind, ask questions. Don't be afraid to ask your physician questions. And the physician also makes sure that he goes for your patient preferences. He looks at what you do and what you don't do, what your job is. And he, so therefore, your treatment can be personalized. Very, very important. And of course, the other thing is echocardiograms help also sometimes to check whether how much buildup in your body might be. Of course, you'll check at the level of LDL cholesterol, but what the effect might be. So here you can get actually look at the carotid arteries, the vessels going to the brain. Uh, we can do an echo on that ultrasound examination of those uh, vessels. And uh, one can look at the big vessels in the heart by echo also to see whether they have any, uh, any buildup of cholesterol. And nowadays we also go for CT scan. Now CT scan can be complicated, can be simple, but go for a simple cut, uh, CT scan. And what it does tells you how much calcium you have in your heart and the blood vessels around that. And of course, when these plaques, uh, when cholesterol plaques uh, become more chronic, uh, they tend to calcify, become like bone. They become like bone. That's how we can think of calcium. So you can look at calcium. And if you have no calcium score at all, at least uh, there is no effect on your blood vessels. But the higher the calcium score, the more cholesterol buildup you'll have. So, so there are some of these indirect ways to look at uh, how much of deposition is there in your blood vessels. And when you have, blood, uh, when you have cholesterol in your, in your uh, neck arteries, that reflects also the cholesterol in your blood vessels. It's very good correlation there. So that is very another important thing because you cannot look at the coronary vessels very easily by echocardiography or uh, non invasive manners, but you can actually look at the carotid vessels and that correlates very well with what you have in your heart. So when you look at this, so he will pro uh, prescribe you a statin and then he will actually after one or two, three months, because it takes some time for the statins, uh, the blood to, uh, the, uh, the, Strategies to have effect on you, then he will take a look at it again and will adjust the dose. If the cholesterol level hasn't gone down much, he will adjust, increase the cholesterol, he may change the statin, he may adjust statin dose because you've got at least seven statins, you've got a lot of statins are there. So he can give you statins, he can give you high intensity statins, higher doses or lower doses of statins he can give you. And accordingly, we'll check your cholesterol and then you should every three to 12 months, you should check your cholesterol to see how much low it has become. 
what is a common side effect? The common side effect is actually muscle pain and cramps. When you have that, easy to treat, you can reduce the dose or you change one of the statins. Or sometimes there are other medications in addition to statins, which can also lower cholesterol. So one can balance that. Most important thing when you take statin is don't take grape juice, grapefruit juice. Many people take grape, grapefruit juice is a no-no when you are having statins because it affects the, uh, affects the action of statins. So very important, avoid grapefruit juice. Now, we talked about the Asian Indians versus other populations. For example, uh, in India, an estimated 30% of all coronary artery deaths occur under the age of 40 years versus only 1 to 4%. 30% versus 1 to 4% in other group, another ethnic, uh, uh, ethnic uh, uh, you know, uh, population. So that's very important. And it, so the main thing, what are the two cardinal features of coronary artery in Asian Indians? Prematurity occurs earlier. So you have young people under the age of 30, they have heart attacks, and then it's more malignant, which means death at earlier ages. You die earlier than actually in the West. So, and I've already explained to you uh, the reasons for that, one of them. One of the other reason is that uh, we probably have uh, latent diabetes in us. Uh, we are all to some extent diabetic, but we, it doesn't come out. It doesn't manifest itself. It doesn't cause any, any problem right away. But then we know that uh, sometimes when you have diabetes uh, in uh, latent, if you have a heart attack or some other stress factor, it will, the diabetes will become, uh, uh, will, will be unmasked and you can see the diabetes. And this actually study was, uh, I did this study uh, in Bombay many, many years ago, uh, showing that uh, people who had have heart attacks, uh, many times the blood sugar will go up after a heart attack, then many of them will come down, but there'll be some subgroup of patients where they'll become frank diabetic after a heart attack. So remember, we are more prone to have diabetes than other, uh, other, other groups. And I think we have shown this uh, in Asian Indians in India, as I showed this study here, when I was actually uh, practically a student at that time. And then later on, uh, later on actually in the Asian Indians in this country. And also, um, when I wrote my MD thesis here, what I did was, I just uh, was able to see, I, I looked at heart attacks and found that many young people like this, like these are young people from my thesis, had heart attacks. We uh, had a heart attacks actually a very young age. And uh, at that time, this was the first time cholesterol had come to Bombay and it was actually in our King Edward Memorial Hospital in Bombay. We had the cholesterol, we were able to check their cholesterol level. And the cholesterol level were high in some, but the other patients, the cholesterol level was not that very high. So, but then they had these uh, heart attacks. So we we're not sure what exactly was going on. We thought pollution might be one of the one of the factors in this. And uh, but the fact remains that heart attacks can occur in very young age uh, in Asian Indians, much higher percentage, much higher prevalence than actually in uh, in um, uh, other ethnic groups like the whites in the United States. And of course, the, I got the first prize for that paper. It was very good because we could see a few more cinemas at that time. Uh, students, 250 rupees I got, which is only about seven dollars or so, but it was very valuable money at that particular time. Now, what we have done in Asian Indians in USA, what we have done here, we thought we should take a survey. How can we collect so many Asian Indians in USA? So we went to, we took a look at Swaminarayan Temple in Atlanta, and there is a particular festival they have. At that festival, all of them go there. Uh, the, the highways are blocked, you know, all people go there. So we actually did a survey and again found that uh, when we look at the Asian Indians, the uh, diabetes, hypertension, everything was much higher than compared to other ethnic groups. The, the Caucasians much higher in Asian Indians. The same what we found in India. So the stroke incidence prevalence was also very high. So again, and these are some of the papers we published at that time. But this is the paper, what I was trying to show you here, was the increased small dense LDL, very small factor, was higher, 44% Asian Indians compared to only 21%. So even over the LDL cholesterol, some of the factors which are there are more harmful, and we have a higher uh, prevalence, a higher, um, higher level of those, uh, uh, prevalence of those uh, more atherogenic factors than we have in the uh, in white. So what I did was to, and this is actually to show you, these are the, uh, subclass distribution we did here, and if you look at number five here, this is these are the uh, these are actually the Asian Indians, very high level, and when it comes to white subjects, they're much smaller level, and this is the one which is very very atherogenic. In other words, this is more uh, this level is more prone to heart attacks in Asian Indians. So what I have done is now to show you um, that um, when it comes to cholesterol fitness, we have three things. 
lifestyle changes, which include diet, exercise, and number two is statin, very, very important statin. So one must reduce your LDL cholesterol to less than 99 milligram uh, percent, even more important, maybe even less than 77 milligram percent. And for this, your physician is very, very important. You have to be with, uh, with your physician. You've got to go to your physician and he will monitor that and see. And this is a very, very important thing to do because this one thing which can actually prevent heart attacks uh, in, in everyone. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Thanks. Can't hear you. Dr. Chopra, kindly unmute yourself. Can we hear you? Can you hear me? Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you now, yeah. It was a most lucid presentation by Naveen about the cholesterol, and he gave us three important factors, that the dietary management, regular exercise, lifestyle, and the role of statins. I think we'll have a lot of questions on this. And with this, we'll go to the third speaker, a very eminent lady uh, who is going to talk on nutrition and fitness. Well, that is the need of the hour. Everybody is asking about what are the immuno boosters, how the nutrition can help us, so we have with us Mona Johar, all the way from New York, the chief so-called nutritionist, which is working in the functional medicine in the United States, and also the co-founder of a very prestigious organization to give her words of wisdom. It's all for you, Mona. Thank you so much, Dr. Chopra. Thank you, Dr. And Dr. Nanda for very, very insightful presentations. Um, I would like to start my talk with a lot of gratitude for our frontline workers who are putting their lives at stake to make sure that we don't lose ours. And uh, I'm extremely grateful to the entire community. Um, I would, I'm going to start sharing my screen here. So um, there's two things that I'm involved in right now, uh, which are which are uh, Mechanism Wellness, which is my startup. Again, it deals with functional medicine. Uh, it's the first ever digital platform that delivers comprehensive corporate wellness programs, uh, which are uh, which are based on time-honored functional medicine. And the other one is um, this um, comprehensive immunity program uh, that is being launched by Divim um, uh, for the first time. And uh, it is one of a kind and very excited that it's, it'll be launched in, in July. And we're all about how do we raise immunity and, and immunity being the most, excuse me, okay. Um, and how do we make ourselves uh, immune resilient, make ourselves uh, so, our, our shield of immunity so powerful that none of the pathogens can actually break through it. So in my uh, immunity being the, the word of, the, of, of, of this time, 
I'm going to be focusing my talk today on immune function and how we can leverage things that are around us in our nature uh, to upregulate our immune processes. So I'll be covering uh, functional medicine aspect of immunity, the connection between digestive, respiratory, and immune uh, systems, how our gut plays uh, the most significant part in raising our immunity levels, what is the mechanism of treatment, and, and what are some of the strategies uh, when it comes to food as medicine? Because that's what we do. Uh, I'll start with what is functional medicine. So in functional medicine, we, we try and get to the root cause of uh, the illness rather than go for the symptom. So it is slightly different than conventional medicine, wherein if you had a headache, you would go to a doctor, the doctor will analyze your uh, symptoms and give you a prescription pill. Whereas if you were to come to a functional medicine doctor, they're gonna try and play Sherlock Holmes for your body and try and find where the disconnect is, where, what is wrong in your physiology that we need to correct and try and correct that so that you do not have that um, symptom again. Uh, so we are in a way called um, uh, super generalists, not super specialists, because we believe body as, as functioning as one integrated system. So every system is interconnected to one another very, very intimately. And that's how we believe our body works. So we're not saying that um, heart is separate and liver is separate and lungs are separate. No, everything is interconnected and one plays an effect on the other. Um, now the, the, the word of, of like literally this year is inflammation. Um, you know, do you get sick at the drop of a hat? Do you get every cough and cold that is out there? Do you have, uh, do you um, uh, get allergies? Uh, uh, do you have to pop in uh, antacids after every meal? Or do you have, say, diabetes? Do you have um, heart disease? Uh, is, is, is like any of these things sounding familiar to you? What is common between all of these? It's, they're all diseases of inflammation. Inflammation is, as a one word, just fire in your system, that your system is on fire. That is what inflammation means. Now, why do we say that, you'd ask like, okay, so where is the inflammatory system in our bodies? We know where the circulatory system is, we know where the cardiac system is, we know where the pulmonary system is, where is this infl inflammatory system in our body? Well, 70% of your immune system lies in your gut. What else lies in your gut is that it houses over 100 trillion microbes. And these could be the good bacteria as well as the bad bacteria in your gut. Um, let me give you an analogy how this works. So think about your gut as a garden. So you lay your garden, you plant your seeds, you water the seeds, you make sure that it has good fertilizer, you make sure that it has sunlight, you make sure that every component that is uh, conducive to, to making your plant grow is out there. And sure enough, you are blessed with uh, a beautiful garden that is healthy, vibrant with beautiful flowers uh, that are fragrant. Now, conversely, if you're not taking care of this garden, what happens? It's full of weeds, the nasty weeds that we do not want. It's the exact same thing in your gut too. So there could be good bacteria and the bad bacteria. The, when you consume good, organic, non-GMO, um, low in sugar, fruits and vegetables, you make sure that you're, uh, you're sleeping well, you're exercising, that you are taking care of your psycho-spiritual aspect that, of course, Dr. Chopra laid a huge emphasis on, and it's really, really important. All these things, they matter. They, they, they're the ones. Um, your, your, uh, your good microbes. 
Um, and that is what matters. Now, conversely, if you're not taking uh, good care of your, uh, of your microbiota, that is you're eating processed foods that is laden with sugar, you're not sleeping well, you're not, um, uh, you know, uh, you do not, you're not exercising, that is the risk of disaster. That is food for your bad bacteria. And that's when everything, you know, goes south when it comes to your immune processes, because these good bacteria are the ones that, that secrete hormones and they secrete um, other enzymes that control the different aspects of different systems in your body. So that is why we say that target your gut first because that should be the first line of defense. Now, we don't need to literally go out anywhere uh, looking for stuff. We know that nutrition, what we put inside our bodies, is really, really important. Yes, I 100% I agree that drugs have their own place in everything. We've heard there's three kinds of drugs that are kind of helpful in this COVID scenario, which would be the antivirals. Uh, you must have heard uh, Dr. Chopra also talked about it. Um, they would be uh, the remdesivirs you must have heard about. They prevent the viral replication. Then there's immune modulators, which will uh, control either the, the, uh, the, the heightened immune response or the subdued uh, immune response, and they will bring it to a homeostasis. And then, of course, we all know about the anti-inflammatories, which are the NSAIDs and the steroids. Now, here's where the magic happens, and we want it to happen here. First, before popping in the pill, I always recommend that as a, as a regular regimen, we keep our bodies strong. We make our bodies uh, bulletproof to any of the microbes that, that could be entering our bodies. So it, it's, it's COVID today. It could be something else tomorrow. I mean, in our environments are full of pathogens. It could be viruses, bacteria, fungi, mold, um, anything. So, so here's the prescription from our nature, from our pantries, from our gardens, from our spice closets. And they're like right here. The tools are right here provided to us by nature. So antivirals, like I just showed you the previous slide, we had the antivirals, which were pharmaceutical medications, but how can we replicate it right in our kitchens? Ginger. So we all know ginger is like a very, very potent antiviral. In fact, in, in our home, we do a ginger shot every day. Um, so just, just crush some ginger, take the juice out, put it in a little cup, mix some raw honey, which is, as it is, very high in antimicrobial properties. Mix them up and mm. one shot in the morning. Really does wonders for your body. The other uh, ingredient is allicin. Allicin is the ingredient that is present in um, garlic. So garlic, we know that um, a lot, we use it in our foods uh, quite frequently. The only thing is that we, what we do not, uh, a lot of people do not know is that allicin is, is secreted, it's an enzyme in, in garlic that is secreted about one to two minutes after uh, you crush it or you break the surface. So I would always advise that um, once you start using, uh, once you've crushed the garlic, just let it sit for a minute or two, let the enzyme start activating and then use it in your uh, food preparation. And of course, then there's, <coughs> excuse me, vitamin D. Vitamin D is, I can't lay more emphasis on vitamin D. Every single medical association out there has, um, has put out um, uh, indications for high usage of vitamin D, primarily because vitamin D, our, our entire body, every single cell has receptors for vitamin D in our bodies. And vitamin D is required for the transport of stuff in and out of the cells and for enzymatic activities, for upregulating a lot of different um, actions in our bodies. So definitely make sure that your vitamin D levels, they are optimal because they have a very potent antiviral effect. Now, uh, the other mode of action where the virus could affect us would be uh, like they enter our body and then they start replicating. That's when we start getting sick. 
N acetylcysteine is um, is is like a known known uh, antioxidant out there, and I think one of the most, especially when it comes to COVID. Um, I see uh, Sridhar had uh, some questions about uh, lung health and pulmonary health. So, um, so my answer would be that N -acetyl, N acetylcysteine, which is the precursor to glutathione which is the master antioxidant that to increase the quantities of this particular supplement, um, which is present uh, a lot in like garlic, onions, leeks, shallots, like the onion family. Then you could also get it from lean meats, um, eggs, oats, uh, and sunflower seeds. What n acetylcysteine does is that it thins down the mucus. Now, when it thins your mucus down, the, the virus does not have like enough room to just go and colonize in there. And also, because it's thinning the mucus down, it's easier to breathe. The other thing that uh, is really important when it comes to replication, uh, prevention of replication uh, of the virus is quercetin. Quercetin is uh, present in something like uh, kale, ladyfinger, uh, berries, uh, especially goji berries, blueberries, stuff like that, um, and apple peels. So a lot of the times when we say do not peel your apple, in, uh, peel your apple, that is the reason because the apple peel is very um, uh, dense in quercetin. And again, it, uh, it has its uh, amazing effect. Vitamin D, you see vitamin D in every single category. Um, this is one of the reasons why we say food is medicine because one food has, uh, has as an effect on so many different functions of the body. So that is why we call food is pleiotropic. So all these things, they, they work at, at, at multiple levels at, imp at improving your immunity. Um, then of course, I'm sure you must have heard about zinc and why zinc is, um, is being promoted a lot and people are encouraged to have more and more zinc in their diet, primarily because it is very, very essential in stopping that replication process of the virus. And then uh, the third category is the immune modulators. Uh, so they, they are the ones that are going to bring in that homeostasis to prevent that either the too much immune function or the, or the suppressed immune function. They bring it to a level where it is at a homeostasis. So again, the superstars here would be the quercetin, vitamin A, which would be a green and the yellow foods and vegetables, vitamin C, vitamin D, and acetylcysteine again. And the stars in this category, they are the pre and the probiotic foods. The pre and the probiotic foods are, are the ones that, that take care of those little bugs, the, the 100 trillion bugs in your, in your body. So the prebiotics, uh, the, the probiotics would be anything that's fermented, kimchi, pickles, um, uh, soy, uh, I, I mean, uh, soy products. So all these products that are um, that are, that are uh, fermented are the ones that are rich in probiotic. And, and what is prebiotic? Prebiotics are the food for these probiotics. So the, pre, the, the prebiotics would be uh, garlic, leeks, onions, asparagus, and of course, the most important, fiber. The reason why we say to have a high fiber diet is because fiber provides the prebiotic, that is the food, for your probiotics, the good bacteria to thrive. So here I have shown you what nature has for us, what nature can do for us. Um, the, the premise uh, that I wanna go with is to use food as medicine approach. Uh, in this, we, we have like three components. One is diet, what you put inside of you, the immune modulator superstars, because we, we need to make sure that we, uh, given this uh, pandemic, we are supplementing additionally with uh, the superstar, the, the most important um, vitamins and minerals. And third is to optimize the gut health, which we talked about a little bit here. So what are the pro-inflammatory foods? 
Well, I think we all know what a pro-inflammatory diet is, what pro-inflammatory foods are. Those are the ones that increase the inflammation, increase the disease process, make you more susceptible to getting these viruses inside you, multiplying and then making you sick. So getting these food groups out of your diet uh, is, is extremely important. Um, and uh, foods like pizzas, breads, cakes, donuts, uh, deep fried foods, um, these are these are like really bad chips, uh, chips, um, alcohol, like Dr. Nanda and, and uh, Dr. Chopra both emphasized on alcohol, how it, it negatively impacts on your inflammatory processes. It brings, it upregulates the pro-inflammatory cytokines. It, um, it leaches the B vitamins out of your system and it also causes a diuretic effect. And, and right now, given this pandemic, we need to make sure that we are really, really well hydrated. And last but not least, we also need to make sure uh, to control this inflammatory process that we are avoiding things that could be uh, inflammatory to us, that, that we might be allergic to. So if you feel like you eat a certain food and you're reacting to it, it's always recommended, do not eat that food. Why? Because it is raising your inflammation. So right now, the need of the hour is to reduce that inflammation, not raise it for any reason. An anti-inflammatory food plan, very simple, very easy. We focus on whole foods. We eat clean, organic products as much as possible. Use a variety of colors because when you use a variety of colors, it just gives you a very good mix of polyphenols. And, and those are really good antioxidants and bring your inflammatory processes down. Uh, quality proteins, again, high in fiber. Can't lay enough emphasis on fiber because remember, fiber is the food for your probiotics, your good bacteria. So we need to make sure that the quantity of good bacteria is high in your body. Now let's talk about sugar, which is one thing that I purposely left off. So we've seen um, that sugar, and, and there's numerous, numerous, numerous studies uh, on, on sugar and its relation to inflammation in your body. We've seen that sugar impairs the body's ability of the neutrophils to engulf the bacteria. So how does this bacteria come out of your body? So the neutrophils have to go engulf it and push it out of your body. And this, and, and we, we've seen that, you know, this process uh, was with just half a glass of, of orange juice. Within two hours, we saw maximum activity of like, you know, reduced, active, sorry, not maximum, reduced activity of the neutrophils. So they were not able to do their, their function. And we saw that with just a half a glass of orange juice, it, the effects lasted for five hours. And these are studies that have been done and published out there. So one thing that the one gem that I would give you is just stay away from sugar as much as you can. The other things that have a potent effect on reducing your inflammatory processes would be uh, introduce like a, a, a different variety of healthy fats in your diet. Um, uh, fats like coconut, flax, olive oil, avocado oil, stay and stay away from the omega-6 rich oils, which are very inflammatory. Omega-3 oils are, are really, really good because they have something what we call pro-resolving mediators, uh, which bring the cytokine activity down, that is bring your inflammation down. So make sure that you have fatty fishes, that you consume omega-3, and uh, like Dr. Chopra very rightly said that most of the Indian population is really deficient in omega-3. So definitely um, because of its anti-inflammatory effect, pay special attention to having fatty fish at least three times a week. Intermittent fasting, that's uh, one of the things that has uh, shown really, really promising results a lot of uh, um, uh, studies done on it. Uh, people practice intermittent fasting in various different ways. They could, uh, they could be practicing anything from 5, 2, 16, 8, 10, 14. That is 
the, the time difference between the last meal of the day to the first meal of the next day. So trying to give your gut some rest. So try, see, we, were, we as human beings are not uh, made to keep grazing, like eating six meals a day. We were never like that. Evolutionary, when you look at evolution, look at the cavemen, they did not eat all the time. Cows graze, human beings don't graze. So eating fixed amount of meals at particular times is the best approach, I would say, for most of the human population. So, so try and eat between a fixed amount of time and, and try to reduce that amount of time so that your gut can get some rest. Because if the gut is constantly involved in, in, heal, in, in digestion process, when, where is it going to have the time to heal and repair? So make sure that you practice some kind of an intermittent fasting uh, in, your, in your daily lives, and that will do your body some good because it will get time to heal and repair. Hydration, can't lay enough emphasis on hydration because you need to have enough water to flush the toxins out to upregulate your detoxification processes because if you do not flush the toxins out, your body will be always compromised. And of course, herbs and immune modulators. Use the herbs in your, in your garden. Use the herbs in your um, kitchen, in, in your pantries, in your spice closets. All these herbs, they are so full of polyphenols. They're so full of antioxidants that they do your body good. So use them liberally. And especially now when you want to upregulate your, uh, your, your uh, anti-inflammatory processes. So I talked about layering your um, diet with some extra boosters that will provide you protection during uh, the COVID crisis, during this pandemic. Uh, which we talked about the vitamin A, C, D, zinc, selenium, omega-3 fatty acids, um, increasing the amount of like, you know, citrus, green tea. Uh, it's really, really awesome when it comes to <coughs> quantities of EGCG, including berries, ginger, we talked about it, mushrooms, raw honey, turmeric. Turmeric is amazing. At bringing down the inflammatory processes, uh, kachi haldi, uh, we all have access to it. Just make sure when you're having turmeric that you have it with some source of fat and a very tiny bit of black pepper because both of them, they increase the bioavailability. They, they make sure that your body is able to absorb the curcumin from the turmeric a lot more if you were to just have it alone by itself. So all this that I told you about, if we were to try and put it in a practical sense, um, the easiest way for me to, uh, to tell you was like, how do we make a salad bowl, right? So we pick a base. Why do we need to add lettuce? I never use lettuce. Why don't, I love to use more nutritious greens to make the salad bad. So use spinach, use arugula, which are higher in the nutrient quantities, the denser in nutrient quantities. Then you add a protein. You could add sprouted beans. You could add uh, grilled fish. You could add chicken, uh, whatever your vegetarian, non-vegetarian you pick. And then add the sprinkles. These are one of my favorite uh, parts of the salad because um, adding nuts and seeds uh, to my salad, it adds the crunch plus the omega-3s that we really, really want right now. Uh, and then, of course, uh, most important is adding more vegetables, add a variety of vegetables, add a variety of color, make your salad as colorful as possible. Add asparagus, celery, cucumber, broccoli, tomato, Brussels sprouts, artichoke, whatever your heart desires. Um, just make sure that you have huge quantities of vegetables in your salad and then pick the drizzle. So most of the times that's where people fault uh, in, their, in their salad is that they'll just dump a whole bunch of um, salad dressing on it, which just takes away from the goodness of the salad. So my go-to is just make sure that your dressing is made of olive oil, my favorite, olive oil, a bit of balsamic vinegar, salt and pepper, and you're done with the most healthy salad ever.
Um, I would uh, like to then tell you about like different vitamins and minerals, uh, and especially during, uh, during this pandemic. We lay special emphasis on vitamin D that the, we like for the blood levels to be between 50 and 80. And uh, Institute of Functional Medicine, um, it, it's recommending a dosage of 5,000 IUs per day. Uh, to, to just make sure that your vitamin D levels are, are at an optimal level. Vitamin A, about 5,000 uh, per day is good uh, as a general rule. You could go up to between 10 to 25,000 IUs, but uh, you have to be very careful when it comes to pregnant ladies because vitamin uh, increased quantities of vitamin A could lead to some birth defects. I think we talked about um, most of the people, they are very deficient in zinc, um, just primarily because the sources of food sources are very, very small. So, uh, and, and vegetarians uh, especially, they, they, they are deficient in zinc. So a uh, dose of 25 milligrams once to two times a day is, is really uh, protective. Uh, probiotics, if you're not eating um, uh, the, the, the fermented foods enough, um, then of course, like something, adding something which has like about 20 billion CFUs with at least like six different strains in them uh, gives you a great protective effect. Uh, Omega-3 fish oils between one to uh, 2,000 milligrams for prevention of um, pro-inflammatory uh, processes. Um, my presentation wouldn't be complete uh, without the lifestyle choices. And Dr. Chopra covered them beautifully in his, um, in his message and uh, how important they are when it comes to regulating your immune processes in the body. Um, stress, and he did talk a lot about stress and how to reduce stress. And uh, stress could be immunosuppressive. That is, it, 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 it reduces your immune system. It makes it weaker. So uh, it, it uh, reduces the T regulatory cells. Um, uh, we need the T regulatory cells because those are the ones that give us protection against the viruses. Um, our immune system shifts towards the Th2, which is pro-inflammatory. And of course, if there's increased stress, it leads to increase in TNF-alpha and IL-6, which are the two pro-inflammatory cytokines. So we need to make sure that we reduce the stress. My simple ways is walking, yoga, meditation, <coughs> some kind of a breathing exercise. Um, my favorite is the Epsom salt bath. It really relaxes me at the end of the day. And of course, I love, love, love cooking. So cooking really makes me happy. And I love to cook. So that's, that's my mojo. Sleep is another really, really important factor. Uh, quality as well as quantity matter. So making sure that you're sleeping enough. Uh, we've seen that sleep that is uh, less than five to six hours. Um, in, in numerous studies, we have seen that their inflammatory processes are much higher than the, the people who are sleeping between seven to eight hours a day. And uh, primarily because, you know, when you're not sleeping enough, there the homeostasis between the inflammatory and the non-inflammatory cytokines is just like messed up. So making sure that you sleep, sleep enough. Toxins, we have toxins all over our, uh, all, all around us, inside us. So making uh, sure, being, uh, being, being aware of what we're putting inside our body, as well as what we're putting on our bodies. Our lotions, our potions, our, our air, uh, really, really matter. Um, so never, never discount what you're putting on your body because your skin is the biggest organ in your body and everything that you put on your body gets absorbed in. So coconut, coconut oil for the past 50 years has kept me the way I am. It has worked wonders for me. I'm sure it'll work wonders for you too. Uh, if you do choose something different to put on your body, make sure that it's coming from natural sources. There aren't like chemicals in it because chemicals do not belong in your body. Only natural stuff belongs in your body. And my philosophy is if you can drink it, if you can eat it, you can put it on your body. So that's how I roll. Um, 
And of course, we just all need to be sure that uh, your water is clean, your air is clean. If you can use uh, an air purifier at home, uh, even if it is for say in your bedroom at night, at least you're getting, making sure that eight to 10 hours uh, of time that you spend in your bedroom, you're getting access to clean air, which you might not be able to do for the rest of the day. And of course, Wi-Fi, if you can, please turn it off um, at night at least to upregulate your inflammatory processes. So in summary, uh, we need to, the lifestyle protocols, we need to pay special attention to our sleep, our, our meditation practices, practice gratitude, uh, which of course, again, Dr. Chopra covered beautifully. Um, uh, very, very important because they all modulate your inflammatory processes. Avoiding toxins, um, don't overconsume social media because that is toxic to your brain. Um, so, so try to do that, connect with your family. Again, that, that falls under, under gratitude. Uh, make sure that you're surrounded by positive people uh, because that reduces your stress. And of course, uh, disinfect as much as you can. Uh, as far as the diet, just as um, a, a revision for what we did earlier, eat the rainbow, eat colors, as many colors as you can. Focus on whole foods. Do not eat foods that are coming out of the packet because they all contain add preservatives, chemicals, uh, artificial colors, artificial dyes, artificial flavorings. You do not want any of that because none of that belongs in your body. Rotate what you eat so that you can get as big a variety of foods as possible because that'll give you, like I talked about the pleiotropic effect of foods, you need a whole variety of foods to provide you with that, with that protection, with that strong armor of protection. And that's what you need to, to make your, in, in, um, uh, your system, your immune system strong and bulletproof. And of course, um, the, the probiotics and the prebiotics, and do not forget to hydrate. Drink, 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 drink water. And thank you very much for, for being here, for listening. Uh, I appreciate all your time. And please remember, like Dr. Nanda said, pick the fork. Health is at the end of your fork. Choose wisely what you put at the end of the fork. Thank you very much. Uh, <clears throat> thank you very much, Mona. I think uh, you mentioned very rightly because a lot of questions, I've seen almost about 325 questions. And the questions were mostly referring to the immuno boosters and the nutrition. And Absolutely. I think you replied very well in all the points that uh, there is a need of omega-3, people have to understand. And you also mentioned repeatedly various colors. Every time you're focusing on phytochemicals and polyphenols, I think people have to understand. And your focus was on a complete food as a whole, which is very important. Your focus on zinc is very well taken. I'm sure a lot of people are getting the information. That if you want to have immune booster, vitamin C, and then you mentioned about omega-3 oil, especially you focus on uh, not uh, olive oil, was your main focus in salads. I think all the points which you mentioned on the diet are very, very important because we are what we eat, as Vivekananda mentioned. And the same way, I think uh, Mona also mentioned that we are very important what we eat. So there are a lot of questions pertaining to immuno boosters. And I think uh, those questions are replied in a very simple language. We'll just take a few questions because of positive time. I think there's one question is to Mona again. Uh, what is the recommended dose of armor, uh, white, uh, this, uh, walnuts? Uh, on daily basis? So nuts, uh, as, as a rule of thumb, I always recommend like no more than uh, whatever can fit in your fist. That is one uh, serving of nuts, right? So having two to three servings of nuts is a good idea, but do not exceed, never sit with a bowl of nuts in front of you because you know what, that's gonna disappear and, and <clears throat> it could be too much. Uh, of a particular type of fat in your body. Because like I said, you need a variety of fat. You need other things too. I think another question is very important. They mentioned about the SCQS controversy. And I think the answer has been replied already. There is no controversy. There is only consensus. The controversy is only for the treatment. 
and we are waiting for the consensus data. I think Mary will mention. So far as the prophylaxis is concerned, we mentioned very clearly, it has to be given for three weeks or eight weeks, depending on where you're working, where your patient is. But SCQS has come a long way, almost 55 years. There is a huge data. So I think there's no controversy. One word of caution, anybody who is less than 15 should not take SCQS. Anybody who is beyond 55, and he has underlying coronary artery disease or a kidney problem, he should consult his doctors because it is the SCQS which prolongs the QTC interval and may cause arrhythmias and may cause heart blocks after the age of 55 if you have underlying heart problems. Otherwise, it's very safe, very effective. And if you see the medicine effect, we have to see the safety and efficacy ratio, safety and benefit ratio. The ratio is very enormous. The drug has been used as anti-inflammatory as spoken by Mona, as well as by Dr. Namin Sinanda. And if you want to reduce the cytokine storm, uh, SCQS has a lot of role besides the antiviral drugs, which were spoken by Mona also, Remdesivir as well as uh, baby flu and many other antiviral drugs are there, but we need the data as to which is more effective in mild, moderate or severe. I think this is very important. Another question from Mumbai, what about lemon juice? Any comments on lemon juice? Well, it is high in, uh, in vitamin C and we all know that uh, vitamin C is one of the immune boosters um, and especially required during this time. Um, so I'll share with you my favorite uh, morning shot. I have a lot of shots during my day. So the morning shot is two tablespoons of olive oil and you mix the juice of half or uh, in India, the, the limes or lemons are really small. So, so one whole lime uh, or lemon and just uh, shake it up and drink it. What it does is, is two things. One, it detoxifies your liver. It's a, olive oil is a powerful detoxifier when it comes to your liver. And uh, vitamin C, it, of course, upregulates your immunity. So does two things at one time. Another question I think is uh, for Naveen Sinanda, and that is on statins. Dr. Naveen Nanda emphasized after the age of 55, people should take statins because he focused on low density uh, proteins, which are especially the LDL, dense uh, low LDL, which is very really high risk factor. And he also mentioned about the plaque ulceration and uh, people are asking which statin is better, atorvastatin or rosuvastatin? I mean, well, uh, it, it really doesn't, uh, doesn't matter. The only thing about rosuvastatin is that uh, Studies have been done uh, previously showing a uh, reduction in uh, LDL correlating with uh, uh, reduced risk of heart attack. Uh, in the Atarva study, Atarva statin studies, many Asian Indians were not included. But in the Rosuva statin study, many Asian Indians were included in those studies. So I think in one way you can think about it, that Rosuva statin from that point of view uh, may be potentially better than Atarva statin, but really there's no real difference between the two. Uh, both are equivalent, and uh, one can take either of them. And of course, if you develop side effect, then you can change to another step. So I think it's a very important information. A lot of data which is available in acute coronary syndrome or acute MI, people are used a lot at orvastatin, and they use for six months. But a lot of patients who got a chronic CAD or CCS or peripheral vascular disease or chronic stroke, I think as Nanda just mentioned, Naveen, the rosuvastatin is superior. But both the statins are very effective because they are uh, pleiotropic effects and uh, other anti-inflammatory effects. And it's a very, very powerful agent. And there is a huge data. I think you use the word that the future is the statins may act like a panacea. So one can use XTOR or one can use RXTOR. They are the drugs which are available in the market and they are very, very useful. And I think one should not condemn the use of statin. Dr. Nanda has mentioned very rightly Statin intolerance is hardly any. And I use the word benefit risk ratio is very, very important. So minor pains and aches here and there, you should not bother it is less than 1%. But see the benefit, 99% of people are benefited. That's the message by Naveen stock. So I think it's very important because vascular health is important. That's a very important message by Dr. Naveen. Micro vessels, medium sized vessels, or large sized vessels. It is like a systemic 
vascular angioplasty when we give statins. So statin cannot be condemned. It is like in Panacea in the years to come, and it has not gone back. He used in one of his slides, 1987, it has come by the validation. It's more than 30 years now. It has not gone back. That means the potential or the power and the promise of statin cannot be challenged. There's one more question about the exercise. I think uh, they mentioned uh, 30 minutes of exercise is enough or one can do for one and a half hour exercise. I think the message given by everyone, 30 minutes is more than enough. We don't need to do more than that. It's more an exhaustion and tiredness. The fundamentals should be clear. So exercise every day, not whenever you feel like. It is the regularity of the exercise, which is more important. That's a message. There's one more question on vitamin D. And he says, sir, I go to sunlight every day from 11.30 to 1.30. Is it enough for me? I think it varies from place to place. I don't think we need one question. Um, uh, Mona has already emphasized that we need vitamin A, we need vitamin C, we need vitamin D, we need omega-3. And I think she told a very important word in Hindi. Kachi. Haldi. Kachi haldi, which is a very important message. I think we all should take kachi haldi in the morning. We add a little lemon, take a lukewarm water. I think that's a very important message on her to our Indian colleagues. We all must take kachi haldi. It has a lot of meaning and it is an immune booster. And she mentioned about the walnut, she mentioned about the almond, pistachio, all can be taken dry, dry fruits. I think there's no doubt about it. And yet, if you still want to go to have sunlight and want to tan your skin, that's your choice. But it's purely, <laughs> purely your choice. I think this should be taken. The next question is from, uh, I think about the meat, so we won't discuss about that. There's one more question, is about the stress management, meditation. I think it's a very, very detailed explained by all the speakers, that managing stress is important, and the best way is meditation, and all kinds of meditation are discussed, but because of positive time, we cannot discuss in detail. I think in short, just to give a final comment, I must say that all the speakers have done a wonderful job, including me, including Mona, and including Naveen. All of, all of them have done a good job. And uh, the questions which were asked, I think were 90% replied, which is very, very important. There except one or two odd questions, but I think the meaning was same. Because there were two or three questions on the oil also, but Mona said that omega-3 rich is very, very important. Because we must focus all the time on anti-inflammatory, anti-inflammatory, anti-inflammatory. And besides that, she mentioned about the probiotics and all those things. There's only one last question is about the honey. On one side, you say no sugar, and then you promote honey. What's your opinion? Well, there's a difference between high fructose corn syrup and honey. And when I say honey, I do not mean the commercial honey that is available in the market. I mean the honey that is coming from the beehives. That is raw, that is unpasteurized. And I'm not saying, I did not say that use like tablespoonfuls of it, have a little bit because a little bit goes a very long way in its antimicrobial effect. So one teaspoon a day is all you need. Last question has come now. I think the last question is on high blood pressure. And they say the high blood pressure you mentioned Dr. Chopra, it is like a global tsunami. So what do you mean by that? I think I just like to explain that hypertension after the age of 50 is 50%. At the age of 60, 60%. If anybody has a hypertension and not taken care of, it may cause heart attack, brain attack, leg attack, abdominal attack, and lung attack. So blood pressure needs to be controlled. And the best way is by lifestyle, as mentioned by Dr. Naveen Nanda, as well as by uh, Mona, as well as by me, that salt restriction, no smoking, no alcohol, regular meditation, and diet, of course, low fatty food, and all the things which are expressed by Mona. And the second to my adequate sleep. I think this was also a very important focus by both Naveen as well as by Mona. So one should sleep adequately if you want not to have high blood pressure and don't have a fit of anger. Be calm, be cool. Otherwise, it will cause more vulnerability to have a high blood pressure. And the second thing, if you are hypertensive, despite lifestyle optimization, then please consult your doctor and take medication. A new concept has come now, that is people should take single drug, one drug which contain three important drugs like uh, CTD or chlorothalidol, and we can also take a drug like immunodepine, and can also take a drug like ARB, 
in the form of telmisartan single dose is very easy single pill which like a single hypertension pill is very important the last question has come from chennai now this is a dr asha murthy i know her very well she is a very eminent cardiologist and head of the department and i think she spoke that all the speakers have done a good job no questions for me so i think this is something good she is the head of the department of cardiology i know her very well and she knows nanda also very well so she has given that i don't have any questions to whatever has been asked there is one guy prashad from hyderabad and uh, i think there's nothing much so i think this is all about the questions and i really express from the core of my heart my gratitude to the scope for the wonderful activity we had and now the final conclusion and the comments by very eminent person of our panel none other than our own colleague dr anil parikh who is the president of ipca and is a very very powerful and a very very accomplished research scientist dr anil parikh thank you dr chopra i think it was a evening full of uh, knowledge uh, at the outset let me thank all the expert speakers and uh, faculty members for uh, sparing their time and uh, you know enlightening all of us uh, i'm also thankful to all the viewers who have logged in from different parts of the country and uh, and uh, let me uh, express sincere uh, gratitude on behalf of ipca as well as our partner sco as well as let me express thanks to tata sky uh, asha kapoor and uh, we had the started uh, the uh, this webinar with samruddhi giving us uh, uh, welcoming all the panelists and uh, uh, on behalf of sco then we had uh, mr atul sopti who introduced the subject of today's uh, scope and health and also emphasize on capacity building during this time then we had uh, dr hk chopra who is uh, uh, who is i think uh, on health and wellness and well being we cannot have a better uh, speaker than dr chopra who is himself can be i think considered a spiritual guru in this regard and who extensively covered the subject and uh, he started with uh, the corona how to prevent corona what are the uh, you know precautions we need to take on the hygiene front hand washing then uh, you know mask and social distancing all this uh, he emphasized the importance of you know healthy lifestyle meditation yoga i think many many things were covered uh, by him then we have uh, the legendary professor navin nanda i think it was very interesting for me to the studies which he showed which was published in nejm by himself and dati the paper of you know uh, glucose elevation after myocardial infarction the uncovering of you know uh, hyperinsulinemic states in indians even though you know uh, the the glucose levels may be normal but there is uh, you know hyperinsulinemia and all this correlation which is now coming to be very well and the risk factors in indians which we said that he had uncovered uh, rise of small dense ldl which is you know uh, very very pathogenic for coronary artery disease and uh, he said uh, the well is two small messages which came out very well for him for you know all the all the, the viewers is get moving i think that's a very very important message right because the sitting is the new smoking so it's the risk factor so his his message that get moving all the time and eat grass means importance of you know plant based diet i think these were the two very uh, messages which came out you know uh, very well and then uh, uh, then mona i think mona johar covered the, the nutritional aspects nutrition as a functional food, functional medicine sort of thing and what diet to eat the importance of you know uh, diabetes and coronary artery disease and atherosclerosis they are pro inflammatory chronic inflammation is there so what diet we can you know do to so that the dietary part can take care of all these things and healthy lifestyle the importance of gut for immunity because now everybody wants to immunity is being very very closely uh, studied not only in you know uh, uh, the traditional infections uh, arena but also uh, in the arena of how to prevent the various diseases there is a uh, relationship between immunity and the uh, you know nutrition that that uh, relationship is coming out very well in oncology there is you know uh, the, the whole new science of immuno oncology is emerging so immunity is coming out to be a very very important and it is being it is being a target of various diseases 
now uh, relationship between metabol metabolic disorders and immunity is also coming out very well so how to have a uh, you know not have an inflammatory diet and have an anti inflammatory diet uh, dietary ingredients those are uh, very very uh, important uh, aspects and prebiotics probiotics how to you know how the dietary factors in the, the interplay takes place so these were all the discussions so uh, the, let me again express my sincere gratitude to all the uh, star speakers uh, starting from dr chopra for today then dr nanda and mona johar and then i, I will express my sincere gratitude to mr atul sopti and the tata sky and i think uh, that's all from my side i think uh, last word to dr chopra again thank you very much i think it was a brilliant uh, uh, interaction i think it was a really international arena people came from all the way from university of alabama in uh, new york and i think they spoke very well they added a lot of value to whatever we spoke here and i am really grateful from the core of my heart to one person here who was a real motivational driver and that was atul sopti i am very grateful to you atul for your wonderful presentation wonderful hard work he has used his whole team and the second person was paul ipka was involved including uh, johnny edwin and uh, of course uh, anil parik they all gave guidance and we have one guy who is a very solid worker such in dyer and i think uh, both navin and mona are there and lastly i am very very grateful to aisha because she made a very nice promo with atul and i think that promo also really helped us and i am sure with the help of uh, uh, vision of atul sopti in the years to come we will have many more programs and we'll have a, a more global reach on wellness rather than just limiting to india and not uh, learning much about this i think uh, i'm very grateful to all the audience who are here with us for such a long time we are already exceeded the time by 30 minutes or 35 35 minutes we really wanted all the international speakers should also be given enough time that's what dr uh, mr atul sopti also said yesterday and i express my heartfelt gratitude and thanks to each and every one from all the three organizations and the audience who are with us till late hours on sunday thank you very much thank you thank you thanks thanks thank you okay so i think everything went on well there is no problem so with this we close and we'll meet you soon thank you navin all the way thank you thanks a lot yeah great thank you <laughs> Thank you, Mona. Thank you, Mona. Thank you, everyone. Thank, thank, thank you, sir. Thank you. 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 Thank you.